Juan Pierre, number nine, center field, joining us here on the Toyota of Hollywood guest line shop. Hundreds of Toyotas indoors and one of America's largest showrooms at Toyota of Hollywood on 441 between Hollywood and Sheridan. JP, thanks for the time, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for having me on, man. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to come on with you guys. It's always it's always ha- it's always great having you, JP. Do you uh, do you anticipate a lot of gooseys and memories coming up on on Friday, uh, getting a chance to be with your old teammates and uh, relive the World Series a little bit? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. I always say once you retire, go on different teams, and guys stop playing. You're around each other all the time, but everybody their lead lives in California. Beck is in. Te- you don't ever see guys. You know what I mean? So. Uh, to come back and the baby to see guys under these circumstances too to celebrate the what 20th anniversary, uh, yeah, it'll be a little goofy's going on. I would imagine. Now let me ask you this because I know when I go back and and see my former teammates, everybody talk about the seasons we had and the accomplishments or whatever. But when we get in the room, we say, "Hey, remember that time?" Uh, and the stories are told. Yeah. They ain't really got nothing to do with baseball. No. Or remember that time we was on the road and you just start telling stories and and everybody wondered, man, I bet you they talking about that that, that run. Yeah. They yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, stuff that happens off the field, whether it's at the hotel or or whatever, or in, in the locker room or clubhouse. Right. Whatever that those are the type of memories that you actually remember. Like you actually said, well, oh, what play happened in the fifth inning? Because a lot of times you do this stuff and the reports actually I'm like, bro, I don't even remember that. You know what I mean? But I remember when we were in Cincinnati and shot basketball or something like that. Uh so yeah, yeah, those are kind of stuff that probably will creep in more than than the actual games that we played. But that season in particular, like you guys had such a great turnaround in the middle of it. And, you know, coincided with Dontrell and Miggy coming up and you guys getting Jack McKean. Like, do you remember in particular, like feeling how you were coming out of spring training and when you felt like it really clicked for you guys? Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, you know, uh, out of spring training, we knew we were a younger team. I mean, the only established player like all star perennial was Pudge, you know, and everybody else was just trying to, uh, you know, find their way and stuff. So we knew we had a good team. We knew we had good pitching, you know, when you have Beckett, Penny, uh, Pavano, you knew you're going to be in every game, but we got off to such a slow start. And then, you know, here comes the the leg kick done trail. He, he boosts the pitching staff and then back and start pitching better. And we got the young phenom Miguel and, you know, walk off home run his first at bat. So we're like, okay, wow. We got, then we had Jack come in, you know, the, he was a grandpa, but he was, uh, cause Jeff Torbo was a great manager, but the difference was like Jack McKeon would kick you in your rear end when he had to, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? That old school and smoking his cigars while walking. I'm like, Jack, how are you going to exercise and smoke a cigar like that? <laughs> <laughs> to this day, it still gets me, but uh, he would do that, but he, he, he got us going and then we just jailed as a team. And then the, the series against Boston was probably the, the defining moment. We're like, okay, we might have some, we, I think we lost like 25 to six, the game before that, then we were down like eight to three, like in the eighth inning, and we come back and win that game nine, eight in Boston. And we are like, all right, we might have something here. Yeah. I remember that there was a, a series against the Dodgers. You guys had like a couple of crazy walk. I remember Mordecai having a walk off Morde- home run. I had season tickets that year. It was like the amount of walk off home run shots you guys had. I remember Don Trell's Juan Encarnacion had one on his. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everybody knows about the Miggy one, but like you guys just had like that, 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 that flair for the dramatic last year. And that made it like possible for like in those post seasons where you had the comeback against the Cubs and things like that. Like yeah. it, it, it must have felt like no matter the situation, once you guys got to the postseason, because you guys had that flair for the dramatic that you could have handled that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm probably biased to it because I lived it. But man, the run we had, I, I mean, I don't see too many teams going on a run like that out of nowhere, you know, and um, like you said, dramatic. we were playing playoff games from like August on, you know what right. I mean, yeah. or September on, because the wild card was all all jumbled up right there, and you had Mordecai and Castro hit a walk off, and yeah, we were prepared for the playoffs, like we, we knew we had a good team, even going up against, you know, Barry Bonds, and we went up against Sammy Sosa and the Mighty Yankees, and we felt in every ser- series that we were we were in every game, like Talent for talent, player by player, pitcher by pitcher. We were in every game. And the media never gave us a chance. So Jack did a great job with the media. Say, hey, we don't even supposed to be here. So we played loose. We played like 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 we didn't have the pressure on us, but we went out there and did our thing. 
Also, you had so many young players, nobody had any scar tissue. Exactly. You know, scar tissue get you. We're just dumb enough to pull it off, you know. <laughs> if, we, if we do it again the next year, we, we thought too much, you know. We, yeah. we knew what it took, but, like, we were just dumb enough to, in a sense, to pull it off because we, we were not scared. Like, I remember walking in the Yankee Stadium. We are like, all right, boys, let's go get them. And you look right. across. You know, and they play before BP, they have the ghosts of, you know, Joe DiMaggio, Babe Ruth. They play all these clips, and we're like, all right, man, whatever. Like, we're about to put it on you guys. And um, and that's what we did. Like, we didn't say it outwardly, but inside, we're like, man, we can we can, we can, can post up against these guys. Wasn't it – isn't it, like, what made that team so special and so rare is that everybody was so young. Mm-hmm. So, during the whole course of the season – you know, the whole thought was these guys are young. They going to break. They going to break. <laughs> they going to break. They don't, they're not used to. And then they get to the playoff. This is playoff. This is pennant chasing baseball. These young guys don't know nothing about that. And you're like, we're right. You're right. We don't. We just playing baseball. <laughs> we just playing baseball before the, uh, the playoff game. We're probably back there shooting basketball or something like that or, or nerf ball or something like before the game. I mean, literally in the playoffs, we were doing the same thing we did during the season. Like right. it was no different. If we're going into San Francisco, you know, Barry Bonds, San Francisco, you know, nothing but orange and black. And we get all uh, molly whopped our first game out there too. Yeah. And uh, I know I was personally like so amped. I'm like, I cannot calm down. I think I struck out like swinging off my knee. I'm like, what am I doing? But, uh, Gerald Williams and Lenny Harris, who was veterans on the team, uh, yeah. pulled me aside. I was like, you too hype. I was like, I know, man. Like, I can't come. <laughs> yeah. They talked to me, and then, you know, I got back right because, you know, I took the pressure of being the leadoff guy. Like, all right, I'm in control of the offense. Like, if I get going, the offense will get going. So every loss that we had, if we didn't score runs, I always felt like it was my fault. So I, I wanted to set the tone. And I didn't set a good one that first game. I'm like, all right, next game. I got I to gotta set a better right. team. Um. And we did, but like you said, exactly. Like we, we, we really like you were walking our clubhouse probably half an hour, forty five minutes before the game. You're like, are do these guys got a game today? Like, do they really got a game? I think on the DVD, yeah. had guys getting their haircuts. You know what I mean? Like an hour before the game, it was just we we're just young and and we pulled for each other. But it, it was just a, um, and playing after that, I realized how magical that season in the team was because I I didn't get it back for the next twelve years. Right. Did you? Yeah, that's, yeah, that happens, man. Mm-hmm. JP, like, can you give us craziest uh, Juan Pierre is a workaholic story? Because like the 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 thought of like you, everybody always said JP always first one of the ballpark. You're rolling the damn balls on the grass to make sure you can bunt it the right way. Like <laughs> you lived at that place, man. Like why why did you have such an obsession of getting there so early to prep for a game? Um, because that's what it was. It was preparation. I didn't consider like working hard. I knew like I was a buck 70, you know, no arm strength, no power, none of these things. But my biggest thing was like, nobody's going to outwork me. You know what I mean? Nobody was going to, uh, uh, put in the work I did. And that's how I survived. I mean, you got, you just mentioned like a Derek Lee, but these guys are six, six, you know what I mean? You mentioned Miguel Cabrera. These guys can hit the ball 500 feet. Like I knew I had to do all the small things. I had to pay attention to detail. Um, and, and, and that's, that's why I had a career that I had was just, you know, purely I would outwork guys, you know, I had skills and talent and I knew I could run. So I worked on the bunny. I knew I can feel I knew I, I didn't have a strong arm. So I worked on getting rid of the ball quick. These are things. The first thing they say in baseball is know thyself, like know what type of player you were, are. And I knew what type of player I was. And, and it was just, I was up. I wouldn't say obsessed with it, but that's close thing. But it was. Yeah, you, you, you admit it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't say. You can't say I wasn't. It did smile. Yeah, but <laughs> but it was it was like having the pressure of like I always felt like I carried the team, and I wasn't a big name guy. Like nobody interviewed me. You know what I mean? After a game, I wasn't that big name guy. But you go. You know, a teammate, the teammate, they're like, oh, oh, Louis and Juan gets on. Hey, we got to get them off the bed. You know what I mean? So, right. like, it's pressure. Start, set the tone. Set the tone, but, you know, not media-wise. And I always right. like doing the dirty work. Like, yeah. I always love that. Like, I'll get on base, still sitting, and the guy knocks me in. They go interview the, interview the guy with the RBI. I'm like, all right, great. You can have that shine. I'm just going to post up every day. And as long as I have respect for my teammates, then um, that's all that matters to me. Talking to uh, Juan Pierre here on WQAM, and you guys can see JP. He's going to be out there at the Marlins Museum doing some photo ops. Mike Lowell's going to be out there, Jeff Conine, Josh Beckett, a lot of the uh, the greats from 
the 2003 Marlins team. JP, of course, the leadoff man, had the high socks, stealing bases, <laughs> like just, you know, just had a complete swag to it. And you like, even like JP, like I, you mentioned, like you weren't interviewed after games, but like remembering just like you had like the hypest, you know, walk up song right to start off to the game. Like you really did get the fans amped up. I do feel like uh, the the fan base did embrace you because of the the type of energy you brought. Like, was that something that you were also conscious of that, that uh, I don't know, just to, to get the fans almost involved with, with the excitement that you played with? That was the most shocking part of it. Like really, the truly the all the I played on six different teams and no other fans embraced me like the Miami fans did. Like, like they used to talk about me bunting and like usually that doesn't even get a, a, a take or none but the fans this is the first place i came where people like wore my jerseys and stuff i'm like man this is a dude i'll sign it like come down i don't care if you're in the triple deck if i saw my jersey i'm like bro come down here i'll sign it. ain't too many of them things flying around here and stuff so uh the miami fans really really embraced my type of style of play you know me and louie working together we're you know still in the bases uh playing the small ball and um and that was our the dynamic of our team too. Our power guys, Derrick Lee and Connor, those guys stole twenty bases too. Like we had speed and power on our team, but it was it was it it was definitely fun. And um, I did take a hold of that. Like I, still to this day, I'll go somewhere. I'll be in Walmart, and somebody be like, "JB, we ready?" You know what I mean? <laughs> a walk up song. I'm like, yeah, baby, you know what I mean? So it's 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 definitely I got so much love in in Miami. And I'm um, just trying to be that table setter and um, not looking for the recognition. But again, the fans in Miami have definitely showed me love and, and continue to to this day. If I'm around town or whatever, they'll all oh, we remember the old three team, you know, what I mean, so it's, it's cool to see. Do you have uh, have you been keeping uh, tabs on this year's team at all? Like they got off to such a hot start. Uh, they're in a bit of a rut right now. When you're a team kind of going through it, you can't seem to to drive guys in in key situations like what? What's the best way to get out of something like this, JP? What do you think the, the this secret sauce this team may need to get back on track? Just keep pushing. There's no secret sauce or none. You just keep doing the work that you've been doing all year and just trust trust in your work. Um, I think we was in September of August, late August, in our 03 run. We went on a road trip, I think San Fran, Pittsburgh, and somewhere else. But we went one and nine on the road trip. And this is like late in the year. And nobody was panicking. I think actually Jeffrey Lord was flying back from San Francisco to Pittsburgh. And we just, I mean, we got swept in San Fran, like just playing bad. So we're in the plane and we feel the plane going down. Like we ain't near Pittsburgh. It's like a five hour flight. It's like, oh no, we're stopping in Vegas. I'm like, stopping in Vegas. So we stopped in Vegas for like three hours. I don't even gamble. So it, I had no, <laughs> I, wasn't, I was probably the only one excited that we didn't do it. So we stopped in Vegas for like three hours because we had all day in Pittsburgh. And then we ended up flying to Pittsburgh just to get our, you know, get our minds off of it and, you know, try to play better. And I, I think we went to Pittsburgh and got swept too. So I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're just like, up. Like, <laughs> Pittsburgh got like, swept and all the broke and the boys broke was broke from gambling. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you're supposed to be telling us the turnaround moment. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a turnaround. Hey, you gave us the moment where you almost got buried. <laughs> exactly. But you know things were in our favor. I think we went one and nine on that road trip. And I think Phillies was which was behind us. They went 0 and 9. So we picked up a half a game. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, picked up a half a game on a one and nine road trip. So hey, we knew yeah. something was working right then, man. <laughs> JP, uh, obviously over the weekend, uh, there was a crazy baseball fight. Uh, yeah. Tim Anderson got, got socked Ooh. by Jose Ramirez. I feel bad for Tim because he got double the suspension that Jose did. He got six games. Jose got three. Uh, what was your reaction to this uh, this crazy fight this weekend? I don't know. I was like, man, that's old school baseball. Like, I mean, <laughs> back even before my time, like, you'll see, like, two of those a week back in the day. You know what I mean? Uh, just old school uh, game, guys getting after it a little bit. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily condone it because, you know, I got kids and all that stuff now. But, hey, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But uh, the biggest thing with that is seeing who really got your back on the team. Usually that, that type of stuff can bring a team together um, and realize, like, hey, we got each other back. We're going we're gonna to do whatever. But, uh, yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a good old-fashioned fight. I don't think we've seen, like, a punch like that since when was uh, – yeah, He was punching for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bautista and uh, what was it? Odor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a crazy one. So, yeah. Connection on a punch. You know, you see and guys get in there before even punches get thrown. But that was 
they they square it off. Like so, they, JP, I was yeah. telling Tobin, he ain't got to worry about the suspension. That yeah. dude cannot go back into that locker room after starting a fight and getting knocked out. Yeah, that's he ain't gonna never leave. He ain't gonna never. Yeah, <laughs> he ain't gonna no. never live that. Like he ain't got to worry about the the league. Yeah, his own team ain't gonna never let him live that down. Teammates and all around the league, man. Then like now you got social media added to it, so it's oh. yeah. You don't want to be that guy. Uh, definitely, definitely starting a fight, but uh, I mean he'll rebound. You know, I, I love Tim Anderson. I do love his game. I know he gets uh the bad rap a lot, but I think he's a good dude down deep down. And um, but definitely that was the and unfortunately that's that's what leads when we have fights with baseball. You know, it's usually football, basketball, and first take all these shows, yeah. but. Baseball get a fight going, and then that that'll, that'll get everybody talking about stuff. Is there one, uh, either one? I, I mean, I, I don't remember you ever getting involved in a fight, like you starting no. a fight. But is there one you remember, either one of your teams getting in, or one that like, or or as close as it could get to one of the famous baseball stare downs that you remember, where you thought I, it was? I, I tell you one thing, like uh, I was playing with the Rockies at this point. Um, well, I just got called up maybe a month in the league. And we was playing the Braves, and this was like Andres Galarraga, Chipper Jones, Andrew, like these guys, uh, Javi Lo, like these guys are huge. So uh, we had a pitcher that hit the big cat, Andres Galarraga, and he was staring at him, and he told the big cat, hey, get down to first base. And the big cat went out. I had never been in a fight ever on the field, like ever. So I'm in center field. I got Larry walking right. I think Ron Gannis in left. So – the big cat charges the mound. So I'm looking, I'm like, I don't know what to do here. You know what I mean? So I look <laughs> like a buck 70. I, yeah. That's the big cat. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, Larry Walker here. So they throw their gloves down. They take out running. So I throw my glove down. So I'm taking out running. <laughs> I like to the pile. And these dudes are all like 6'4 here. I'm like 5'10, a buck 60 maybe. So I'm like, I ain't getting nowhere near this stuff. So they were like throwing haymakers and breaking up. So I saw like little Raphael for Kyle was the shortstop. <laughs> <laughs> He was like my size, so I'm like, all right, I'll stand by him in case something pop off. Like, I, I, I got to get him, but I ain't trying to mess with Chipper and Andrew and all. This. Yeah, you you, you stand in your weight class? Stand in my weight class. <laughs> but I said, know thyself. You got to know that. I wasn't trying to, trying to get in with, with none of these guys. But, yeah, I that's the – bro, I think we had one bro like in 2005 with the Marlins. I think Alex Gonzalez actually fought. We were playing the Phillies, um, but they broke that one up pretty quick. But uh, nothing, nothing like a good old-fashioned brawl, though. Get the juices flowing, you know what I mean? Break up the monotony, I think. JP, uh, you're awesome, man. We appreciate all the memories, how hard you worked. I, can't, I know the fans can't wait to go see you Friday at the uh, Marlins Museum. Photo ops with Juan Pierre and a lot of the greats from the 2003 team. Always a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for spending time with us. Oh, Thank you, man. Anytime you need me on, man, I'm here for you guys. All there right. you go. Juan right. Pierre, number nine, center field, 2003 champion. I love that guy, hey. man.